today we're going to talk about what you can do for a fuel system. We're going to cover a method that I think is pretty easy and inexpensive and should apply to any Dakota made from 87 through to 2004. This may even work for the later model ones after 05, but you have to do your own research. So here it is. Let's get started. What I chose to go with was a 98 style gas tank. Now this was a 3.9 liter Magnum engine that was in this truck. I don't know if the later sending units work or not, or if the 92 uh, through to 97 gas tanks work, that's up to you, but you can refer to a service manual to find that information. I did a little bit of digging just on a hunch and I looked through uh, an online version of the 98 manual that I found. What I learned was that the sending units looked almost identical and the gas tank straps seemed to be the same. So if you have a first gen Dakota like my 89, the 98 gas tank will strap into the truck. So that's what I decided to do. Now key point with using the Magnum gas tank. At the top of the gas tank, is a fuel filter slash fuel pressure regulator. It's all one contained system. Rather than needing a return line, it can actually bleed the excess fuel directly back into the fuel tank. This means that you only need one line to feed from the gas tank to the engine, just like the original Hemi, or at least in the Ram that I'm working with. So if you have a Ram like mine, which I assume should be the same from 2003, to 2008, the sending unit will drop directly into the Dakota third gen gas tank. Again, this might work for older Dakotas. It's up to you to look through a service manual like this one. All I have is an 89. I was able to find a PDF online for the Dakota service manual uh, for a 98 through 2000 and you could probably do the same if you want to do some of your own research. For this swap, all you need to do simply is take the entire fuel sending unit out of the ram and stick it into your Dakota tank. The rings, the rubber seal, the grommet, all of those components appear to be compatible and the same. For me, it was a direct bolt up. Now in doing that, you have swapped over the larger fuel pump required for the Hemi by using the factory fuel pump, which is great. Alternatively, you could swap the fuel pump and the fuel pressure regulator over to the Dakota tank. Bear in mind, the Hemi uses a 58 PSI regulator, whereas the Magnum uses, uh, I think it's a 50 PSI regulator. So you wanna make sure that that component is swapped over if you choose to simply swap a regulator and a pump over to the factory Dakota tank. Now, without digging any further into it, I thought I would go this route because I don't know if the fuel sending unit, uh, or at least the fuel float, the fuel level signal would be the same or not. So rather than have to dig into it, I thought it might be better if I simply use the RAM sending unit, then I know everything's going to work with my computer and my harness. Now, if you have a Magnum that has the same quick disconnect for that fuel sending unit, you might even be able to use your factory lines, but I'm assuming you'll have to fab something up. I'm using a 3 8 or 6 a.m. Uh, fuel line, and I print some quick disconnects onto it so I can hook this thing up just like the factory intended. Leave yourself a generous amount of wire uh, for your re-terminations. Because you'll have to cut uh, one of the wires, I want to say it's the fuel signal, uh, out of the chassis harness, or at least that, that big, I think, C130 connector, you'll have to reroute that directly to the fuel tank. So, um, two things, make sure you leave lots of length for that, and make sure you leave yourself uh, a lot of length for the relay out. So, my relays were on the passenger side of the uh, engine, compartment, mount it to the firewall, cross over the transmission, and go down the driver's side of the vehicle parallel to the fuel uh, 
poles. It came up a little short. I had to add some extra length to those two wires. So maybe just get out in front of that and learn from my mistakes. Now the fuel necks are different diameters and different systems entirely. But I'll show you how that works. I had to use a radiator hose because that was a rubber hose that had a larger diameter step down to the smaller diameter and just happened to fit the components I was working with. I'll show you how that works in the garage though. This Dakota here has this fitting on the side of the tank that a soft hose mounts to. What I have here is the 1989 Dodge Dakota filler neck. This has a fitting that I can actually use the Dakota hose for, so all I have to do is cut that to length. That's the easy part. The more difficult part is getting this filler neck to fit to this tank like so. But what I'm going to do is use this radiator hose. I'm really hoping that this rubber holds up to the fuel, but I guess we'll find out and cut this to length because this actually has an expanded end that fits this diameter. There's a difference in the size between this fitting and this fitting. So using the radiator hose allowed me to adapt uh, whatever the hell this is to whatever the fuck that is. And this is just a peak, just a vent and uh, if I feel like putting the purge canister and stuff in, I'll do that, but I'll, fit, I'll find some solution for this later. If you have any better ideas for the fuel neck, I can always swap it out. It's actually pretty easy to service it. I don't even have to drop the tank out to get to it, which is cool. So um, tell me what you think. Well, I hope you found this information useful. Please like this video, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to follow the rest of the build. Thanks.